Hi everybody, my name is Sarah and welcome back to Educating Adventures. Do you ever wonder what wildlife is doing when there's nobody around to see what they're up to? Well, you are not alone. Lots of people wonder what wildlife is doing, including scientists who have developed some really incredible ways to track animals so that we can learn all about them. Let's take a look at some of the amazing ways that we track animals. Before we talk about all the amazing ways that we can track animals, we first have to ask the question, why do we track animals? I'm gonna go ahead and give you guys just a moment to pause the video and discuss, why do you think scientists track animals? Okay, are you ready? Well, there's lots of different reasons why a scientist might track animals, but generally we track animals to see where they're living and what they're doing so that we can better protect them. If we're gonna protect an animal, we have to protect the environment where they live, which means we have to figure out where animals are hanging out. There is a lot of information that we can learn by tracking animals. We can learn what part of the environment that they're using. We can learn what time of day they are active. We can learn if they live in groups or if they live alone. Sometimes we can even figure out what they're eating. We can learn all about an animal's behaviors just by using these tracking methods. So let's take a look at some of the most common ways scientists track animals. Scientists use different tracking methods depending on a couple things depending on what type of animal they're trying to study and what type of information they're trying to learn about that animal. So for each of the methods we're gonna talk about here, we're gonna talk about what it involves, and then we're gonna talk about the pros, which are the good things, and the cons, the not so good things about each method. So let's go ahead and start with our first tracking method. We are gonna start with satellite tracking. Satellite tracking is a process that uses satellites from outer space to help us pinpoint where an animal is. So this involves capturing an animal, putting a tracker on them. So this could be a collar or a harness or sometimes just a tag that goes either on their ears or on a different part of their body. And then we let that animal go and the tracker that they wear is picked up by satellites. And the satellites can tell us where exactly the animal is. So now let's discuss the pros and the cons. The biggest pro about satellite tracking, the good thing, is we don't have to be anywhere near the animal to collect that data. It could be anywhere in the world. The cons are that we have to collect the animal to begin with to put the tracker on, which can sometimes be stressful for the animal. These trackers can also be kind of large and heavy, so we can only use them on bigger animals that can carry them. The batteries of the trackers don't last forever, so at some point they will stop sending data. And lastly, satellite trackers can be disrupted by things in the environment. If the animal goes underground or goes into thick vegetation, the satellite might not be able to detect the signal. So. While there are some cons associated with satellite tagging, this is a really common method. We use satellite tracking on things like sea turtles in the ocean. We also use it on larger hoof stock, animals with hooves, like deer or bighorn sheep. All right, our second tracking method to discuss is radio tracking. Radio tracking uses radio signals that are sent off by a transmitter that scientists can pick up using a receiver. So what this involves is scientists will capture the animal, they will put the transmitter on the animal and then release it. When scientists want to know where the animal is, they take their receiver, which sometimes can look like a big wand or an antenna, and they take it out, they point it in different directions, and the receiver will beep. When they're in the right direction, it beeps louder, and this tells the scientists what direction to go to find the animal. Now, let's discuss our pros and cons of radio tracking. Some pros are that these transmitters are smaller than the satellite transmitters are, so smaller animals can wear them. 
We also have seen with a lot of these radio trackers, the transmitters will fall off at some point, typically at the end of the study. So that animal doesn't usually have to be recaptured to take the tracker off. And now the cons for radio tracking. The animal does have to be captured similar to satellite tracking so that we can put the transmitter on the animal so that can stress them out sometimes. Perhaps the biggest con of this method is the scientists have to be there near the animal in order to determine its location. So the scientists have to be in that same environment. And lastly, similar to the satellite tags, a lot of times the signal can be lost if the animal goes underground or is in thick vegetation. Now, because more animals can wear these transmitters for radio tracking, we see lots of birds wearing these, sometimes vultures. We also see canines, like African painted dogs. That way scientists can keep track of where they are in the park. Our third method to discuss is banding. Now what this involves is using an ID band, which can either be made of metal and have a little ID number on it, or different colors, and the animals will wear these bands and scientists can see where they start and where they end up. Now banding is typically done with birds and what this involves is catching the bird, putting the band on the bird, and then re-releasing the bird into the wild so that they can continue with their normal behaviors, and then eventually, hopefully somewhere else, somebody can capture that bird, see the ID number, and figure out where it came from and where it's been. Now, there are pros and cons with this as well. Pros are that the bands are very lightweight and small, so even tiny songbirds are able to wear these bands. The other pros are that this allows us to determine a lot about migration patterns of birds, which are some, is something we're always trying to learn about, and because we're collecting the bird to band them, we can record data about each individual bird that we capture, which helps us to learn about the species. Now the cons of this are that we have to catch the bird more than once typically to record the data about them. That can be very stressful for the bird. The other con is that there's no guarantee that we're gonna catch that same bird again in the future. However, when we do, it provides lots of valuable information. So banding, like I said, is mostly done on birds and we see it very commonly in migrating waterfowl, so birds like ducks, and songbirds that migrate. Fourth up, we have camera traps. And even though the word trap is in the name, I promise it's not a real trap. Camera traps are motion censored cameras that can take photos and videos of the environment when we are not there to disrupt the wildlife. So the way this works is scientists will go out, they will place these motion censored camera traps in different places in the environment, and then when wildlife walks by, it snaps a photo or a video, and then after a couple weeks or a couple months, scientists come back out, they grab that little memory card, and they can see all the wildlife or any motion that's happened in the environment since they first placed the camera. Now, there are a lot of pros with using camera traps. We do not have to disrupt the animal, right? We don't have to capture them or touch them or go near them to get this valuable information. And it does provide us with a ton of information. It lets us see what animals are doing when we are not there to disrupt their behavior. So we can see what direction they are moving. Are they alone? What time of day are they active? So lots of good things about camera traps. Some of the cons or the challenges that camera traps provide scientists with are the images are not always clear, so it can be kind of hard to tell what we're looking at in some of the photos. A lot of times they take photos of branches or leaves blowing in the wind, so it takes a lot of time for scientists to sort through all of that data. And lastly, it can be kind of confusing. We have such a small view of the actual environment with these cameras. There can be things happening outside of what we can see on the cameras that could tell us more information. Now camera traps can be used for a lot of different animals, but we see it used very commonly with things like emmer tigers so that we can learn where they're going in the forest and then protect that part of the forest. We also see it being used with jaguars, with deforestation happening. We wanna know 
what part of the forest jaguars are using so we can protect it. Our fifth method to discuss is using prints or an animal's footprints to track them. And what this involves is being in the environment where the animal lives and being very detail oriented and focused. Scientists will spend a lot of time scanning the ground looking for footprints. Now, like they all do, some of the pros that this method has is it does provide us with a lot of good information. It tells us what direction the animal was traveling, if they were alone or in a group, and it can tell us about the diversity in the area, meaning how many different animals are in that environment. There are some cons with this one as well because this doesn't work in every type of environment. If you're on a sand dune, there's not gonna be a lot of footprints for you to track. Footprints also don't last forever. If you're tracking footprints in the snow, they could melt. If you're tracking footprints in the mud, it could rain. So footprints are not always available and there's some information we don't get from it, like a visual component or knowing what time the animal was in that area. We might use footprints to track an animal if we are in a woodland environment. And so we commonly use footprints to track animals like bobcats or even animals like bears. Our sixth and final method to discuss and one of my personal favorites is using scat to track an animal. And if you don't know what scat is, that is the very fancy science word that we give to wild animal poop. That is right, we can use an animal's poop to learn a lot about them and what they do. So what this process involves is for scientists to go out into the environment where the animal lives to again, be very detail oriented and focused on what you're looking at because you're looking for poop. And when you find this cat as a scientist, you're gonna collect samples and then you're gonna analyze it. And now, it might seem like there's more cons than pros for this one, but I promise there is a lot of pros for using scat to track animals. We can learn a lot about their diet. That is the most important part of what we can learn. And learning about their diet can also tell us maybe where the animal has been or what time it was active. If there's a lot of scat in the area and it's all from the same species, we can see if that animal lives alone or in a group, or if the scat belongs to a different species, we can even learn about some of those interactions that these animals might be having. Perhaps the biggest pro for both using scat and using footprints is we never actually have to interact or bug the animal itself. Some of the cons are that you may not always find the scat, right? There's no guarantee. It may also be hard to tell who the scat came from. And lastly, you have to work with poop, which isn't the most glamorous job in the entire world. But sometimes using scat can also help us learn about how animals interact with us and our human environment. When we study the scat of animals like coyotes or raccoons, we can learn if they've been eating maybe things that humans have been throwing away or growing rather than their natural diet. Well, while my curiosity alone could lead me to track animals in almost every single type of environment, scientists do it for a really valuable reason. We must learn about the animals and what part of the environment they use so that we can better protect them and their ecosystem. So I challenge you now to get out in your environment and go track some animals. See if you can find some footprint or some scat. See what you can learn about your local wildlife. And thank you so much for joining me today to learn all about tracking animals. If you wanna test your knowledge with activities and quizzes and projects, be sure to check out our Educating Adventures website, like and subscribe to our channel, and we'll see you guys next time.